So there's an LOI signed, the deal is moving through diligence, and now you want to get from the signing or the agreement on terms to the closing. How do you avoid the process from breaking down? I'm Arthur Petropoulos, managing partner here at Hillview Partners. We're a middle market, low middle market, M&A and capital advisory firm, helping companies generating a million to $10 million a year in pre-tax profit or EBITDA, sell their companies for secure capital. And so today, we really want to dig into how do you keep a process from breaking down? And some of these things contemplate the pre-LOI, kind of getting out to the market and talking to people. Some of them contemplate more of the formal diligence towards the closing of the deal. But here are five real considerations, things that can be pragmatically implemented into the process to avoid the process from breaking down. Because just like anything in business, there's a level of momentum, there's a level of deal fatigue on the other side that can kill things that should take place. And how do you avoid that and what things can be done? These are some considerations. So the first of these is a clearly defined path. Now this can take place prior to LOIs or can take place during the diligence process, but there needs to be a defined path. Say, okay, these are the five things that need to get done. If we're in diligence, we need to have lawyers review the documentation. We need to have a quality of earnings from the buyer's uh, accounting firm or, or CPA, and we need to have the definitive documentation drafted and reviewed by both parties. We need to review the schedules. There's 10 things or so that need to take place, but it needs to be clearly defined. So at no point is anyone just shrugging saying, huh, what do we do next? Because those types of things kill the momentum. Those types of things create gaps of time, gaps of everybody knowing what they have to do next. It can be problematic and ultimately break down a process if not managed correctly. The second is hitting timelines on the process. So it's one thing to define what are the steps, but you have to put temporal components or variables to them and say, okay, this is what we want to do for day 15, day 30, day 45, day 60, right? So that everybody's tracking it along the way so that every time a milestone is hit, there's more momentum towards the next one and everybody can collectively and independently gauge, is this thing on track? Are we doing the things we need to? Because at the end of the day, everybody answers to someone in the sense that there's chairman, there's ownership people in businesses, there's clients on our side, whatever the case may be, but you have to be able to go back to those people and say, here was the path, here was the map, here were the timing milestones and elements, these are the things we did, and here's how we're keeping it on track, and that keeps the process from breaking down. And number three, clearly defined issues. And so there's not going to be any process in business and whether it's selling a business, finding capital or whether it's anything any of our clients do or anyone in business, there's always going to be issues of a sort. And so nothing should be swept under the rug and they need to be clearly defined. They can be big issues, they can be small issues, but as issues arise, which they always will and as they're flagged, they need to be listed, lined up and clearly defined. Okay, here's our running issues list. At what point are we going to communicate that to the counterparty and work through them? But it has to be listed. And building off of that is number four is addressing these issues head on and so once the issues are all compiled again it's fine if you flag all of them but if you do nothing about it it's not going to create a forward momentum to transaction and so everybody needs to sit in a room everyone needs to look at each other and we all need to say okay these are the issues let's walk through each one and some you're going to have to come back to over and over again but if you lock everyone in a room you say here are the issues let's all get to some sort of a happy medium relative to each of them you will do it right most good things as we said in a lot of these videos in business or in life in general sit behind a handful of difficult conversations and that's no truer than it is in the deal business and so the last consideration in avoiding process breakdowns is going to be making decisions and plans and you can almost think of the concept i don't know who said it but it was make a meeting from a meeting so every time some issues are tackled every time one milestone is covered within the process have the next step of the process laid out to everybody have everybody's homework assignments allocated and delegated and that way there's no confusion as to what everybody needs to do and what the next steps are there's a misconception in business in general that people can be lazy that people really don't want to you know, pick up the ball and run with it and that's really not the case it's far rarer to find people who are lazy in business what you find is that people that don't have clear instruction as to what the next steps are and you can make the argument as to kind of what intuition or get goingness they have in terms of finding out what those next things are however if you give people clear instructions you're very likely to get clear responses. If you were to say to people, this wood needs to be chopped, these holes need to be dug, they really won't have a problem in doing it and they'll do it well. Now, that's I think a next level to say, hey, holes need to be dug, can you figure out where they need to be dug? Planning out what the next steps are, who needs to do what and what those next milestones are will eliminate 95% of the risk of a breakdown in process. So to recap from today, if we want to avoid breakdowns of the process, here are five things that you need to do. One, clearly define the path forward. Two, hit the timelines or the temporal elements of the process. Three, clearly define the issues. Four, 
address the issues head on, and five, make decisions and plans from the last decisions that were being made. And so if you can do these things, now whether it's the process, as we're alluding to in this video, of getting from a signed LOI to a closing of a deal, or really anything else in business, you're going to find that the processes break down far less because there is that momentum, there is that continuity, and there is a generally collective understanding of what needs to get done and what those next steps are. So that's a thought for today. Hope the week continues to go well for everyone. Keep pushing forward. God bless. We'll see everyone next time.